All right, Donald Trump on his way to Minnesota right now. A state so solidly Democratic that it has not voted Republican since 1972. And then he's going to head to another Democratic stronghold, Michigan, yet another state once seen as a safe bet for Hillary Clinton. Hillary, at one time, had what many call just an insurmountable lead in the battleground states. But now suddenly, as he gains momentum, that firewall is crumbling. Joining me right now with a look at all of it, pollster Lee Carter, conservative commentator Gina Lauded, Democratic strategist John Rowley, and Bill Whelan, Whelan from the Hoover Institute. Good to have all you here. Lee, starting with you, um, people are saying he could actually turn some of these historically blue states red. Your thoughts? I think anything is possible in this election. So I think as we're looking at these polls, it's so hard to predict who is actually turning out. So likely voters are what these polls are made of. I think we're seeing that in North Carolina and Florida, we're seeing that Hispanic vote is coming out more than expected. They're not counted in likely voters. I think the traditional Reagan Democrats who haven't voted in places like Minnesota, like Michigan, mm -hmm. for a long time are going to be coming out in record numbers. So I think that we're going to see quite a switch on Election Day from what we're seeing in the poll. Wow. I mean, Gina, this is what people are anticipating. Hey, look, this is what we saw with Brexit, right? All the polls basically said there was no chance that the UK was going to separate from the EU. And then all of a sudden, as you got days closer to the event, the polls started to narrow. We started to see things sort of shift, much like we're seeing now. And then what do you know? Lo and behold, the EU, uh, or the UK yeah. rather, said bye-bye to the EU. I mean, are we, are we witnessing potentially a similar uh, a similar phenomenon here. I think that that, uh, that was very inspiring for people who were hoping for an outsider to come in and do the things that Mr. Trump has done. I think it might account even partly for the momentum that we're seeing. Um, you know, he comes in with that outsider status. That's what voters, especially the undecided voters, that's what they'll tend to gravitate to once they're actually in that voting booth. But uh, we saw the enthusiasm gap in the latest Fox poll that uh, tells us that that enthusiasm gap is getting even wider in yeah. Mr. Mr. Trump's favor. So you combine those three factors, and uh, I think he has reason to feel optimistic. For you know, let, let's let's zero in on a state uh, like New Hampshire, John Rowley, my home state. Um, and, you know, suddenly you've seen a real turnaround in those polls. Hillary Clinton had been leading. Now they're neck and neck. What happened to her? Very clearly, I mean, about nine days ago, there was a black swan in this race, which was the FBI announcement. This campaign was over then, and so that's really been a game changer. And so as you look at states like, New, whether it's New Hampshire, Florida, Nevada, um, a lot of different places, even the bluer states of Michigan and Pennsylvania, there is plenty of good and bad news all over the place for either side. And I think really there's probably a competing uh, turnout model, and they're not mutually exclusive. Is there going to be a tidal wave of Latino and Hispanic turnout, which is a total rejection of Trump and a, an attraction to Hillary? But then also is Trump's silent majority of the sticks, this rural vote, which we see in a lot of places, is turning out? I got to tell you, John, you're enough? sounding uh, remarkably middle of the road right now, usually, <laughs> which, which I, I'm wondering if you're getting nervous now, if you can't call this because you've been so... Uh, so much sort of under the assumption that Hillary Clinton would take this in a landslide. And, and I think yourself and other, other pundits, frankly, have started to back away from that in a way that uh, is very interesting right now to watch. Your thoughts, Bill? Well, I think both sides should be nervous because in this election, <laughs> I was doing the math before we went on the air. There are six or seven states that go red to blue or blue to red in this election. Trish, if you go back to 2012, only two states flipped from one side to the other, Indiana and North Carolina. Uh, look, you go from three different time zones and find states and all these time zones that could change. This is great. The one thing about this election which I find fascinating, it's like watching the Super Bowl and that both candidates have come to a core strategy. Her strategy is turnout. She's going to marshal her forces uh, through early vote and then ground game on Election Day. And Trump is hoping for, frankly, a cosmic force that, like, <laughs> like you mentioned with Brexit, <laughs> but isn't that voters are going to turn they're great. Isn't that enthusiasm? Well, well, enthusiasm, too, and you're going to see this, for example, a good, uh, a good place to look at this is Ohio right now. Uh, CBS YouGov came out with their battleground tracker poll this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, Hillary has a 63 to 13 lead among early voters, but you look on the other side as to enthusiasm, and Trump enjoys the enthusiasm side, so yeah. and let's he not may forget prevail on election day because right? of that. Since some of those early and don't, ballots and don't, were, were don't, cast, I mean, John was just right. making the point that this election may shift dramatically as a result of the FBI investigation. Uh, and, Lee, don't, what are you and don't forget one other. Hang on, I'll come back to you in a second. But what are you seeing right now, Lee, in terms of 
um, sentiment among voters who were in the middle, independents. I mean, we've got the mm -hmm. Fox News poll, right, which That's suggests right. that a lot of independents are increasingly going for Trump. What is your data showing? So we are seeing 8% lead in, in Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton in, in the independents. There were times we saw more. Mm -hmm. But I do think that right now, the independents are leaning towards Donald Trump. Whenever I'm doing my dial test, I'm looking and focusing on the message. He is winning them over. And the reason is, it's not necessarily about Donald Trump. And I think that's what people have to understand. This is not about the man Donald Trump. This is about the anti-establishment. We need to do things differently. D.C. needs to be blown up. We're tired of the corruption. Everything that's come out in the last few weeks about WikiLeaks and Comey has indicated this backroom politics that's not for the people, it's for the elite, and I think it's got people upset and more likely to vote for Donald Trump than they would be before. Wow, it's interesting. Uh, Gina, you uh, originally were not a Donald Trump supporter. Uh, you, you came around through the primary process. Um, is one of your biggest concerns as a voter, as a conservative, this idea that somehow the system is rigged and that the political elites have just taken over? Well, we've seen that, and, and I know that to be true. I, I'm married to a former state senator, and I've seen how the establishment works, and I know that there is a huge force, uh, both uh, you know, Republican people who at least call themselves Republicans and Democrats who've been against Mr. Trump. But I also think that he has done a marvelous job, Trish, of working that to his advantage and saying, hey, I am the outsider candidate, sort of, sort of re rejecting that label uh, and, and just running as a, a, a almost an independently minded conservative who is constitutionally based. I think that will yeah. win those undecided th that want the outsider it's very, vote. You know, it, it is the year of the outsider, and I think that people are increasingly getting so fed up with both parties um, that they don't want to see someone who's just beholden to a party itself. He certainly has not been beholden to any party for sure. Anyway, Lee, Gina, John, and Bill, thank you so much. Good to have you all Great here. It's going to be an interesting uh, yeah. well, two days to go. <laughs>